This right here is the summary of the concept of baraka in Islam. Let me translate this for you. Wabarik, and oh Allah put blessing, put huge, unbelievable, never-ending blessings. Li for me, fima in that which a'ataita. You have already given. That's the past tense. It's the past tense. A'ataita. Meaning what you have already given. I'm not asking for more, Allah. What I'm asking for is that what you have given me is more than enough. It suffices. What I already have is more than enough. I'm just now asking Ya Allah to, in, to inject the element of barakah and blessing into that which you have already given me. That is the concept of barakah. Barakah is not more. Barakah is not about more. Barakah is about the ability to do more with less. Barakah has nothing to do with quantity, it has everything to do with quality. The quality of what you have. I don't need more, Ya Allah. I just need blessing on what I have. The ability to do more with less. And this is something very interesting, very profound. You know, more and less, and blessed and not blessed, and quantity versus quality. And if you really get to thinking, if you do some deep soul searching, It'll, it, it'll hit you like a punch. It'll really knock the wind out of you. Because you read a narration about the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You know, the day that he passed away, there were a couple of mats. There was one or two jugs. There was a mule tied outside the house. There was a sword, there was a shield, and a couple of pairs of clothes. That was the sole possession of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the greatest human being to ever walk the face of this earth. That's all he had. And he had nine homes, which is another topic for another day. But just to put it, things into perspective, you gotta chew on that for a second. Today we got one home, five people within the home, everybody's got a job, everybody's working, and we're still in debt. Something's wrong, something's missing. And this is where I want to get down to the core of the issue. I'm just going to lay it down. And I'm going to apologize before I lay it down that if I do offend anyone or I do... If I cross any lines, just please forgive me. Meet me in the bazaar, I'll buy you a hot dog. A halal hot dog, alright? Right? So just come to the bazaar, I'll feed you a hot dog, alright? Don't be mad at me. So I'm just gonna say it like it is. We have a lot of discourse, we have a lot of conversation, we have a lot of discussion in the Muslim community today about Sharia compliant financing, halal this, Sharia compliant that. And I'm not criticizing, you know, the people that are providing these services. They are very good, beneficial services for those people that need them. But I am keeping it real with y'all for a minute. We are obsessed with the conversation about how can I take something that I don't need, I have no reason to have, there is no explanation for me having it, and find a way to somehow make me feel better about having it. We are obsessed with this conversation in the Muslim community. You want to know what Sharia compliance is? You want to know what halal is? You want to know what the Islamic financing, banking, financial, monetary system is? If you can't afford it, don't buy it. That's Islam. That's Sharia compliance. If you never buy anything you don't need, that's you are living a Sharia compliant lifestyle. That's as simple as it is. And I know it sounds oversimplified, but it's really not. Wallahi, it's not. We got to understand this. Let me, let me explain something to y'all. There, in some places, for some people, there is even some legitimacy to a conversation about needing to buy a home, even though I personally don't agree with it, but to each his own. Maybe I don't live in your shoes, I don't know your circumstances. I'll tell you, by the way, we talk about, oh, but we have to have a home, we have to live somewhere, I have to raise my family. I lived my entire life in an apartment complex. I lived my entire life in an apartment, and I feel like I turned out okay you understand I'm trying to be real with y'all for a minute you can drive a used beat up old car the first I talked about the car I drove last year I talked about it over here first car I ever drove the doors had different colors 
And you know what I did when I graduated past that car, when I could actually afford to buy a nicer car? We had our simple rule, if we don't got cash in the home, we don't buy it. If you ain't got cash, you don't buy it. I know that sounds oversimplified to some people. But that's how you live your life. That's how you live a responsible life. So even when I bought another car with cash, mind you, that other old car with the different colored doors, I didn't sell it. You know why? Because I had a little brother. It was too good of an opportunity to pass up. And I made him drive it until he drove the wheels off of it. I actually had to pay somebody to take that thing out of my driveway. But that's just how it works. If you can't afford it, you don't buy it. It's a very, very simple, straightforward philosophy.